Hello, this is Dennis Surgent, and I'd like to review this PDSA cycle of learning and improvement with you. I consider it the heartbeat of organizational performance, and I'd like to spend a few minutes with you today to take a look at this very fundamental element of continual quality improvement. So there is sometimes discussion about what's the difference between PDCA and PDSA, and what the difference is. And some people argue about the differences between the two, but we think that it's not really an either or choice. Rather, we think the choice should be guided by knowledge, not by habit or dogma. Let's explore the similarities as well as the differences so we can decide for ourselves which term to use and which method to use for our situation. A little history about this is it's important for us to understand the two choices of methods before we get into the details of the methods. You probably are familiar with the PDCA. Maybe you're more familiar with the PDSA, but they have a common history and are grounded in the scientific methods of improvement. Let's examine this history before we examine the PDSA method. The evolution of the scientific method in the PDSA cycle really begins back in the days of Galileo and this field of pragmatism that inspired C.I. Lewis to write his book on integration and empiricism of pragmatism. This is the foundation for the work that Walter Schuhart did in Bell Laboratories in the 1920s. And it's an opportunity to take a look at the parallel progress after Deming shared the Schuhart cycle with the Japanese in the early 1950s. The Japanese used the PDCA as their way of describing it. They called it the Deming wheel, but clearly they labeled it plan, do, check, act, and they've used it in quality control and total quality control efforts in lean production. Deming, however, took it forward and he continued to refer to it as the Schuhart cycle and ultimately in the early 90s started to describe it as the PDSA, the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle. It's important for us to think about starting this process with a theory of improvement. We each have an idea about what it is that might improve our process or the problem we're trying to fix. As Deming described it, knowledge begins with a theory of improving something by a method. And that evolved from the Schuhart cycle to the PDSA cycle of learning and improvement. And I quote Dr. Deming in, without theory, there's no learning and without learning, there is not knowledge. This plan, do, study, act cycle is a way for us to test our theory of improvement and see whether it works or not. This theory of improvement is really critical, but one of the things that was discovered in practice is that there were some questions that would help people focus their PDSAs. Ron Moen, again, from the Associates of Process Improvement, helped develop this model. This model has three basic questions. What are we trying to accomplish? It helps us focus our aim on what are we going to try to test? The second question, how will we know that a change is an improvement, goes to the measurements that we would use to say, was this improvement or was it just a change? And then the last question, the third and final, is what changes could we make to create improvement? You'll see that these three questions obviously will help us move this plan, do, study, act through multiple cycles as we learn and improve. In the model for improvement in the PDSA and in the results that come from the PDSA, we have the evidence of improvement. We can identify what it is that we accomplished, what we learned, and did we actually make an improvement. It is important for us to think about how we've clarified the aim, tested our theories with each discipline cycle of the PDSA, and how we've evaluated the evidence. We have an opportunity to think now about the time we've completed the PDSA cycle, and we've got the results, we've got the evidence, and when we have our results, from each PDSA cycle, we evaluate that evidence and decide to adopt the change if it worked, or we run it again in a broader application, adapt it and run it again or abandon it, and recognize in that case that we learned that our theory was wrong. We still learned. The important point for us to recall is that we have decisions to make and we've got the evidence to make decisions with. 
Dr. Deming again said, without theory, there's no learning, and without learning, there's not knowledge. So we have the opportunity to build on our knowledge base and move forward in improvement. And There are different ways for us to look at the PDSA, and some people find it very easy to think of the PDSA as a circle. But I also sometimes run into this idea that people think of it as a cycle. And if you look at the curve that's created by the connection between P, D, S, and A, P, D, S, and A, you'll see that there's a continual wave. If we unhinge the PDSA steps and think about them one following another, it will lead us to better performance. There's also a way for us to think about the use of the PDSA to create order out of chaos. In your system, you are the yellow area in this diagram, and you have an opportunity to think about what's in it for you. What's in it for you is your desire for improvement in the system that you're part of. You have an aim, you have subject matter knowledge, and you have a theory of improvement. By using the PDSA, you have an opportunity to learn if your theory is correct and to change your theory if it's not. By awareness of Deming's system of profound knowledge, you have an opportunity to learn more about a theory of knowledge itself. You have an opportunity to learn about the understanding of systems and their interactions of the parts, as well as an understanding of variation and the psychology of people working in systems. Resources that we've identified here on this next to the last slide are multiple. They're very well established authors. You have an opportunity to download the PDF and study along with me and the rest of us who are engaged in continual quality improvement. We want to thank you for your attention. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me by phone or email. If we can't immediately answer, we'd be happy if you'd leave a message and we'll be sure to call you back at our earliest opportunity. Thank you.